has gone batty. Hold on. Jeez, you think Yanimo has figured out the power in that piece of the watch? Now, if you ever wanted a quick description for an episode, I could offer you that right now. This week simply goes as follows. Ben fucks around with the watch again and causes all manner of hell to break loose, so Dr. Animal returning and fucking shit up as well because Ben fucks shit up to begin with and it turns out that Gwen must save the day again. Breathe, darn you! Gah! 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 If you didn't quite catch all that, basically Ben does some dumb shit that creates even dumber shit. Oh, there's a big surprise! That's an incredible- I think I'm gonna have a heart attack and die from that surprise! I've always been rather outspoken when it comes to Dr. Animal as an antagonist for the show. He never possesses much of a threat, as every time Ben goes to take him on, it's quashed with all the intensity of washing your hands. Some of the concepts that they play around with whenever he's involved are fascinating, like the mutation of frogs and odds, and we'll see an exciting escapade with a new alien in Season 4, and in fairness, what he does here is pretty interesting too, but I just don't care for this villain. Brother, this guy stinks! I know that he's supposed to be the conventional mad scientist with outrageously asinine intentions for the world, and I've said before as well that he's voiced by a strong actor, but those tropes and strengths are not enough to bolster this guy for me. So out of respect for my own patience and excitement to write the script for next week's finale, I'm gonna make this as brief as I fucking can. That's what she said! <laughs> We begin with our gang setting up camp for an alligator festival out in the Floridian Swamplands, where Ben is fucking around with the watch, trying to activate more functions. But after being told to stop by both Max and Gwen, he breaks the cover off the dial and it burns into the floor. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Quick to cover up his actions, Ben hides what he did, but the residual energy from the dial plate causes the environment to mutate, and the next morning he attempts to cover up the damage again with some chewing gum when they are attacked by Dr. Animo. I don't care! Uh, Animo seems to have just been passing through here though, but it bears many fruits for his labour as he finds the dial piece and amplifies its power to mutate creatures into alien hybrids with the DNA signatures of the Core 10. Well, that's fucking... Not good. Ben realises that the dial piece was lost during the fight when he becomes multiple hybrids throughout the episode as well, that includes stink flying forearms, diamond head and grey matter, and rip jaws and heat blasts. As the group begin to search for Animal, they locate him, having encountered a few of his experiments across the swamplands, and they engage in a fight against him, but Max is the first of human trials to become a revolting slug human hybrid. What the hell is even that? Ben finds it tricky to operate his mutated form with rip jaws and heat blasts to close us out, but Gwen becomes the saviour here for all parties involved, having stopped Animal from doing any more damage, and together the pair bring Max back, and Ben manages to reconnect the dial piece as he transforms back, unifying the Omnitrix once more. We close on the group, venturing off with Gwen uttering the words, I told you so, for having screwed around with the watch to begin with, but Ben seemingly chooses to ignore these warnings again, and tries to break it apart for better mutated transformations. Now, in the list of potentials for aliens to be mutated together, there was one name that caught me off guard as we closed out, and that was Ben mentioning the potential for Excella Freak. The clue there being Ghost Freak. You know, the one alien that was seemingly removed and destroyed in the first half of the season. For whatever reason, he was mentioned here, but I can't understand why this was the case, as however you watch this, he was already removed from the watch. In the production or chronological order, Ghost Freak would have been removed before Wild Vine's addition to the watch, but in release order, he would have just been destroyed destroyed in the last episode as well. So, this mention here was likely one of three reasons in my mind. Either Ben just got excited within the universe and he forgot the Ghost Freak was removed. You stupid idiot! Two, the writers simply forgot this aspect and just continued with it in the script. You stupid idiots! Or three, these episodes were written out of order in production and a detail just got a little mixed up. That's a stupid decision! That can only be made by a stupid idiot! It can't even be assumed that Ben still has Ghost Freak on the watch because, and spoiler warning for season 3, Ghost Freak returns following his decimation earlier this season. In a larger arc that brings together various creatures and escapades introduced throughout the series that all align with the finale. And we see after he's fully destroyed again, his DNA is re-added to the watch, but in his evolved state. <laughs> Let's be honest, I'm probably just overthinking this, but it just makes for a slight continuity error that till now, the show has done a very good job to avoid. I mentioned in the opening that Animo has never been a particularly compelling villain for me, and is certainly a more comedic foil for Ben to just kick around. A point of which is even validated by the time of the spin-off shows, when they get Animo doing long-winded monologues about how he'll succeed in life, only for the group to go back and bring him down to size. I don't need another speech by some impotent whack job whose mother didn't love him, rationalising why he needs to 
to conquer the universe. That said though, the device he built here was rather unnerving when you consider this is what he was able to do to Max, and I shudder to think what else people would have been transformed into had he been given the chance. Thankfully though, Animal only has a couple other appearances beyond this now, and only one that centres around one of his hap-handed ideas being unravelled with a debutant that honestly should have received more screen time. As for the premise itself, the concept was legitimately entertaining. To see the combined aliens with vocal changes and amalgamated design choices made my day, especially with Diamond Matter. Heat Jaws was probably the clunkier of the bunch in terms of the conception, but to see Ben have to get logical with his newfound transformations, and consider what would affect Rip Jaws will affect Heat Blast as well and vice versa, made for a rather tense situation. Though I love the idea of the watch just saying fuck you to Ben by giving him this particular pairing. There's not much else to say regarding this episode though, other than Gwen was hilarious in this one with Megan Smith's delivery and tone of her feeling like peak level Gwen, and to have her be the one to save the day was an excellent boost to her character. Overall though, this was a genuinely good time, just a bizarre location and rather unsettling ideas. So that's gonna do it for me for this week though everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more of it, and until next week everyone, take care, and I will see you soon.